Hey everyone, today we're going to cover another hard surface modeling technique of how to add panels to your geometry. This paneling technique is great for props, vehicles, mechs, environments, and anything you can think of. You can see an example of this technique on this curvy plane here. You can also see that I applied this technique to the cyberpunk grenade I modeled last week. We'll make sure to keep edge flow topology in mind during this whole process. As always, if you found this technique helpful, or even have any tips or suggestions of your own, let me know down in the comments below. So with that, let's get started. Alright, so let's just begin by hiding uh, everything in our scene so I can have just a nice clean slate. I'll hold shift right click and I'll create a simple cube. I'm just going to scale this guy up. Uh, really what I want to do is just delete all of the faces, so if you hold uh, right click and go to face mode, you can delete all the faces, select the faces and just hit delete. Now what I want to do is just kind of create a nice quick curvy surface. So I'll grab this edge and hold shift and move this up and just kind of move and position this. So you'll see that I'll have just this nice, simple curvy uh, geometry here. If I go ahead and hit three on my keyboard, you can see that enables smooth preview. And if I hit R, I'll go ahead and just kind of scale this out. So we have something like this. All right. Now, of course, when we're dealing with uh, adding detailed hard surface elements to our models, you need to make sure that you have quite a bit of subdivisions um, applied to your geometry. So what I want to do is hold shift, right click and go ahead and smooth. All right. And I'll go ahead and actually do that about three times or three subdivisions here. So this should give me something uh, pretty good to to work with here. All right, and I'll hit Q to exit the tool, and here we are. So the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and select the elements, uh, and you can do this a couple different ways. So I can go ahead and kind of know if I want to add in a panel here along these edges, I can go ahead and do so. So I'll go ahead and maybe do kind of this rectangular shape here and bring this edge up, and we can go up to here and I'll just kind of continue this edge selection right about here. So I'm just kind of holding control shift and double clicking. All right. And then I can grab uh, these two edge and just kind of go to the end of this edge selection. And there we go. So I can take this right here and I can do what's called uh, a detach component. So I can hold uh, shift, right click and detach. Now you can definitely do this with uh, selecting faces and using uh, extract faces if you want, that works, but this at least keeps everything uh, as one solid object, okay? So here's what we have so far, and what we can do now is now we can go ahead and do that extract, okay? So I just use the edge selections to detach, and then I use face selections to extract, all right? So we have our panels here, and these are the panels that I wanna add, and if you can see now, I can go ahead and take a look at this. Everything's looking pretty clean so far. But if I hit three, you can see now this is where uh, we need to make sure we add that uh, that nice thickness, thick, uh, thickness and depth. All right. So what I want to do is go ahead and select these two planes or these two pieces of geometry here. And what you can do is you can do this one at a time. Uh, so if I select this. Uh, face here or shift click the uh, neighboring face, I can go into multi uh, or edge component here and double click these edges like so. Okay, so that selects the edge loop here. And then what I can do is hold shift and right click and do an extrude edge. All right, and I can go ahead and move that down. And we can see by doing this, we get we start to get that thickness uh, added in to our geometry. So I'll go ahead and just do maybe negative two. So that's uh, goes down a, a good amount. If I go ahead now and smooth preview that you'll see that okay, we're on a good start, but things are pretty soft right now. So we have to add in uh, some holding lines. Okay, let's go ahead and also do that technique, do the extrude on the outer edge here. So I'll hold shift right click, extrude edge, and then I'll also move that down. Okay, so we get something like that, and I just use a value of uh, negative two, and you can see that it holds up uh, pretty well. But this part's the easy part. Now we wanna add these holding lines, okay? We wanna make sure that everything's nice and tight. Um, and I'll go ahead actually and hold right click, assign favorite material, and I this is where I typically wanna work with a fong to just take a look at the highlights on the geometry, okay? 
and make sure that we're preventing any artifacts. So if you take a look uh, at this, um, Actually, a video that covers this also pretty well is uh, Andrew Hodgson, who's a hard surface modeler at ILM. And uh, I'm, I always just call this technique just adding holding lines, um, but they call this uh, triple edge because you always add uh, three edges to hold the form. For example, if I hold, if I grab my multi-cut tool, okay, and so let me just go back one step, hold shift, right click, multi-cut, hold control. Now I can start adding this edge, okay? So I can hold control, click, one, two, three. So those are the three edges that you typically want to add uh, to your models here, okay? So you can see that I'm adding this uh, all the way around, and I'm going to get some nice, good, good solid corners. If they're not... Um, you know, you can make sure that they're nice and square, but we're just doing a quick example of this, okay? And then I can go to edge mode here and do this multi-cut, and you can see the same thing. I can hold control and I can add one, two, three edges by adding this triple edge uh, technique to kind of hold these, these corners, okay? This does work really nice for these nice, simple um, panels here. So we're off to a pretty good start, and I'll go ahead and add that last one there. That should be everything, and I'm just toggling X-ray mode, by the way. Um, if you're interested, uh, that's just hotkeyed there, okay? So if I go and click off Edge Faces and select these two uh, panels here and hit three, there you go. So these two panels are looking really good, and they're being held really nicely. And if we go ahead now and do that on this, uh, surrounding geometry, you can see that we're going to need to uh, do a similar technique, but a little bit more work is going to have to happen, okay? Um, the other thing that's really nice is if I hit one on the keyboard, you can see that it's pretty much flush with the uh, the surface here, all right? So this is really, really nice and gives us some nice, nice details that you would typically uh, find on some very hard surface machine panels, all right? So let's let's work on this piece uh, here. So you'll actually see me use the similar technique of how to handle corners, because that's exactly what I'm trying to do here. So I'm gonna actually put everything back to one, uh, and I have a video on how to handle corners. So if you go here to edge mode, you'll see I'm gonna use that exact same technique here. So I'm gonna basically just add an edge that kind of runs down so we get a nice, square corner okay and so on this square corner here this is where i'm going to want to just split this face here like so and you can just uh, connect the two and hold and right click to exit the tool then what i want to do is take this now and cut this corner to something pretty close uh on that matches the inner panel so there we go so you can see i'm going to grab this vertice here this corner and then I'm going to go ahead and cut uh, this piece here, okay? So with that, and if you could go ahead now and see, I can now take these two edges here and go ahead and control backspace and boom. We now have this nice face loop that's going around and this is going to hold our corner much, much better than just having... Um, to move these edges, right? Because there's other things you could try to kind of move some things here. But when you start to do that, man, that, that is what really starts to mess up your geometry, right? And things come misaligned and just become a complete mess, okay? But if you can plan your topology and strategically add in the edges where you need them, it's going to keep things nice and clean. All right. Remember, we're talking about good edge flow. We're talking about topology here. All of that's going to be applied to, the, you know, this entire model. So here I am again, just kind of adding in these corner pieces or these corner edges, just like so. All right. So if I go ahead and hit three, control backspace, and here's where we're at. And I'll just continue that and do that same exact technique here on um, these other corners, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that same technique on these corners here. Okay, so here we are. I went ahead and added in uh, all the corners here for the uh, outer corners. And this piece here, um, we can go ahead and just kind of do a, a similar technique here.
and because of the way we have this edge flow routed it this is what we're going to this is what's going to happen for this inner corner piece these edges are going to run into this corner and add a nice holding line because we don't need in, in this case actually to do the same thing where we split it and then add uh, geometry. No. So here you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. I'll go to my multi cut tool, right? Because now if I smooth preview actually so you can see where we're at, we're, we're on uh, a, a really good start. Things uh, are almost there, but now we need to really hold these uh, these lines here. So, like I, like we said earlier, we'll triple edge this and add these holding lines. So I'll hold Control uh, here, so we get something like this, and you can see that it's going all the way around, and then it kind of doesn't know what to do at this corner. And this is where we can just kind of do a last uh, finish off this edge flow here just like this and there you go and so you get this nice held corner and then of course we need to add in that edge that goes in uh, right here to hold the inner piece so that's the third edge of our triple edge now zoom out and let's take a look and there you go this nice curvy surface here has these nice detailed panels and if we go ahead and take a look at this, again, without smooth preview, everything's good. Maybe if we made some adjustments, we can delete edges or redo the paneling or get as intricate as we want. And then you can go ahead and hit three on your keyboard. And there you go. Once it subdivides, it's going to look really good. You can also uh, just select these pieces here hold shift right click and do like a nice soften edge and you're going to get a similar look here which is going to be great for your low poly lower poly models all right but uh i'll be showing techniques basically how to uh, go from this here and to bake down this detail to uh, a low poly model all right so that's the technique overall so if we go back to our grenade here we can see that we have uh, that already already done. So I'll go ahead and actually just hide this cube, and you can see that the exact same technique. And you know we're we're kind of keeping some of that original form here uh, and that original detail, and the same exact thing. And I can cut this and split this into as many different panels that I want. So you can see all of that happening here. Now, if you find that you know things are a little bit off and you don't have enough edges like for example sometimes what typically happens is you know you might go here and because you don't have enough surfaces that your these faces aren't going to align perfectly or you get some uh, no, uh, smoothing issues and artifacts and whatnot in that instance I would go back to the original geometry like this and subdivide it uh, again so it just really depends on if you have something like again if we grab this cylinder here you know with uh 16 i can just kind of scale this up right so that's not going to be nearly as much geometry as we need to add in uh, paneling in detail right so you can maybe take it a step up take a look at 32 if that's not enough 64 or even uh, subdivide or uh, add in add in more geometry. I typically st stick with uh, 8, 16, 32, and 64, powers of 2. And then that's uh, sticking with those numbers is basically uh, all I've ever had to do for, for detailed geometry. But again, just a good rule of thumb is if you don't have enough geometry for the paneling, then just subdivide and uh, continue there. Just always make sure to save uh, before you do that. All right, so that about wraps it up. The last thing is, you know, whenever you're doing this, it helps to kind of keep these corners aligned. Uh, it, it does; they don't need to be 100% perfect, but keeping these corners around here uh, will help uh, keep your panels nice and tight um, as you as you need see fit, right? So again, I'm talking about if I were to go to the multi component and select the vertices, I'm talking about these edges here. And vertices and these edges here so matching those up is just going to make sure that you have a really nice hard surface uh, machined look there okay so as always if you appreciated uh, 
and found this helpful, like, comment, subscribe is always appreciated as I'm continue, uh, continuing to grow the content here. Um, feel free to drop any comments on if there's anything you want me to uh, cover more in depth and uh, any later tutorials. All right. So as always, stay safe and I'll see you guys around. Bye.